It's the one place in Las Vegas where people crave our chocolate-covered history exhibit. The floodgates are open on water education. There's no need to fish for compliments about our trout dish. And there are many more stories at the Springs Preserve where all that matters is what's elemental. Visitors to the preserve who can never get enough of a good thing, the newest exhibition at the Origin Museum, which is all about the transformation throughout history of raw cacao seeds into one of the world's most sought-after food products, should satisfy everyone's taste for an epic tale about the natural world, human discovery, industry and conflict, and our insatiable hunger for a whole lot of chocolate. The exhibition originated at the Field Museum in Chicago and has been traveling the country for many years, attracting crowds who were obviously pleased that the idea was inspired by museum goers like themselves. At the Field Museum we actually surveyed our visitors to see what exhibitions they would like to see and chocolate just obviously resonated. And provided the Field Museum team with just the right mixture of dramatic ingredients and scientific information to design a gallery space that's as exciting as it is enlightening. We are very lucky at the Field Museum. We have a staff, an exhibition staff of more than 70 workers. Um, so from the very beginning process of developing the content to actually building the physical structures you see behind me here, it was all done in-house at the Field Museum and we have a team of scientists on staff who serve as content advisors and helping us to tell the story of this rich treat. Which has now encircled the globe from its beginnings as a native plan of the new world to become the obsession and prize of most modern cultures. In chocolate, visitors of the Springs Preserve will first enter the tropical rainforest of Mesoamerica and meet the cacao tree who is central to our narrative. They'll then journey back in time to the ancient Maya civilization of Central America and come to discover how the Maya unwrapped the delectable but bitter flavors of cacao over 1500 years ago. We look at Europe and witness chocolate's sweet introduction into the upper classes of European society and lastly its development into a mass-produced global commodity which we know it as today. All told in a panorama of settings that symbolize chocolate's spectacular journey through time and from continent to continent. And visitors will be able to enter an ancient Maya temple. They'll see a, a 16th century Aztec market. They'll go into a chocolate shop of Europe um, and then lastly they'll end up in the factory and uh, finally the fields of uh, Africa where today most of the world's cacao is produced. One thing that surprises visitors um, in seeing the exhibition is that for more than 90% of chocolate's history it was only consumed as a warm beverage. It wasn't until 1847 that chocolate was able to be produced as a rich creamy solid bar. But because of this exhibition, they'll rediscover chocolate in many innovative ways. We have several hands-on interactives in this exhibition. One digital interactive um, allows visitors to see how the cacao tree is really interdependent on its rainforest neighbors to produce cacao. And then at the end of the exhibition, we allow visitors to test their chocolate expertise and they're able to um, answer questions about chocolate consumption and production, such as which country eats the most chocolate and um, whether men or women eat more chocolate and the answer might surprise you. Once visitors more fully understand what makes it both the stuff of everyday life and such a luxury, they will forever after have a better appreciation of the cacao tree's miraculous growth from deep rainforest roots to a high place in religious rituals and its current role as a most addictive but also accessible consumer good. Chocolate and its many missionaries and worshipers have accomplished a lot. Today, Americans eat over 3 billion pounds of chocolate a year, which is about 12 pounds per person. And while it is a favorite flavor amongst most Americans, very few of us know where chocolate comes from 
or the diverse roles it's played throughout history for thousands of years. So this exhibition shows that the allure of chocolate is not modern, um, but it's existed far before our time, um, and we are able to enjoy it because of its rich um, and enticing history. Why not renew or upgrade your annual Springs Preserve membership today and receive just the discounts, privileges, and benefits you, your family, friends, or colleagues deserve? For more information, go to the membership page of our website at springspreserve.org. Animal life abounds and amazes visitors in one of the preserve's essential collections, which is a sanctuary and showplace, but above all, house and home for an impressive community of indigenous desert specimens. The Springs Preserve Living Collection consists of a variety of uh, native wildlife here in the Mojave Desert. So it's native mammals, reptiles, and vertebrates. We've got fox, cottontail rabbits, a whole host of, uh, of native lizards and snakes. And we've got the creepy crawlies, the tarantulas, scorpions, that sort of thing. All in a location that replicates the Southern Nevada landscape and nearly ensures the kinds of animal sightings that can be quite rare in this region. This is a great place, especially for, for folks that are, are here in Las Vegas and they want to learn more about the animals that you know, they might find in their backyard or out while they're hiking trails in Red Rock or Valley of Fire. This is a great place to, to find them on exhibit and kind of get that up close and, and personal experience um, here while they're on display. The first and most familiar animals in the collection have now been joined by one little species in great need. Since we opened in 2007, we've expanded our collection a little bit as well. So we opened up a, uh, an amphibian exhibit featuring the relic leopard frog, which is an animal that scientists thought went extinct back in the 1950s and was actually rediscovered in, in the 90s down by Lake Mead. So we're part of a, a conservation group and, and just have those animals on exhibit uh, just for conservation education. So it's a really neat animal to, to showcase and really fits well in our overall collection. Recently, the Living Collection's original home has expanded further to include an innovative new habitat where guests can experience the closest possible encounters with an otherwise free-flying creature. And then last year, the Springs Preserve opened up our seasonal butterfly habitat, and that is an awesome offering that we have down in our gardens. And then we feature a variety of native and exotic butterflies. And that's uh, an exhibit that's open in the spring and fall months, and that's just dependent on weather because uh, it's open to the elements. So we want a, a good temperature range for, for the animals and something that's really comfortable for our guests as well. Everywhere animals appear in the collection, they're brought to life even more by fascinating facts about the unique adaptations they've made to this environment. The animal collection here really pairs well with uh, the rest of our conservation messaging here at Springs Preserve because, you know, big thing, we're living in the desert, so it's about being water smart, and, and so it's, it's sharing how these, these animals have adapted to live in, in such a, an arid environment. Year-round, the Living Collection staff offers classes and behind-the-scenes viewing opportunities. And during the summer, a popular series of shows has focused in the past on bugs, venomous reptiles, and desert survival skills, bringing animals and humans together and making us better neighbors in this Mojave home that we share. Uh, the zoology team in particular is uh, really hands-on with animal shows, particularly during the summer months. And what's great about those is we typically those on a daily basis. And, and that really takes advantage of the fact that we know kids are out of school and they want something to do. So we're offering something fun here at Springs Reserve that, uh, that families can, can come and, uh, and enjoy. With the coming of spring, butterflies will be on the wing again as we reopen our unique natural habitat. And you can even honor mom with an engraved commemorative butterfly, a perfect Mother's Day gift. Visit springspreserve.org for details. Anytime you encounter water in the Mojave Desert, it can be an overwhelming event, which also makes it a constant topic of conversation and education throughout every museum and natural feature of the Springs Preserve, and a major part of the state-of-the-art technology and thought behind our very impressive Flash Flood exhibit.
Flash Flood exhibit is here in our Origin Museum, and it's one of our more popular attractions inside Origin. It's 5,000 gallons of uh, gravity-fed water. It shows a, a perfect example of what happens here in the Mojave Desert when we do have a flash flood. The exhibit fits perfectly into a series of galleries covering the geology, resources, animals, and humans that have inhabited and shaped the Las Vegas Valley throughout the ages and right up till today. It's right behind the spring mound, so uh, it's a good tool for you see the spring mound, what brought everyone here, and then we go into the other aspects of the Mojave Desert. In keeping with the Origin Museum's journey of scientific discovery, the enclosed slot canyon setting of the flash flood exhibit is designed to be an immersive learning experience from beginning to end. We have a video that is played with uh, two scientists that are talking back and forth with one another, one that's on higher ground and one that's lower in the canyon and they talk about some of the native species um, that are here in the canyon. Then we have lightning and thunder that go off to kind of set the atmosphere and then a huge rush of water comes, comes rushing down through the canyon. You'll get a little spray from the water uh, on your feet, on your legs and a very memorable reminder of how vulnerable all life can be when faced with such a sudden deluge. So it shows us how the natural washways that we have here in the, in the Mojave Desert have, have been changed and how that water rushes through and causes devastation here throughout the Las Vegas Valley. Even this controlled chaos makes a lasting impression on most visitors, but particularly on the younger ones. To see the expression on the kids' faces when the water starts to come down and then the water gets a little stronger and stronger each time and the kids will take a step back and they're not quite sure exactly what happens. And, and then they feel the water hits them and it gives them a true sense of what it would actually feel like if, there were, if they were at a, at a flash flood and, and near one. Of course, this is as close as anyone should ever come to a flash flood. But the shock and awe the experience provides is the perfect opportunity to follow up with a teachable moment about respect for the forces of nature. Then we go into kind of the do's and don'ts for the flash flood here in the Mojave Desert where you want to stay on high ground, you never want to go on the bank. And we explain why we have flash floods here. And always remember, as many of our returning visitors do, that this is the one place you could come to seek out a flood which is ultimately more instructive than destructive. For the most part, the kids get very excited for it. They can't wait to come back each year uh, on their school field trip tour. That's the biggest part is, hey, are we going to be able to get to see the flash flood exhibit this year? Nevada's celebrations and traditions are the common theme among a wide variety of winning images from our sixth annual juried photo contest, now on display in the Big Springs Gallery. For more information, visit springspreserve.org. Every day at the Preserve, we're dealing in the power of ideas about the environment, and one of our recent and notable educational transactions is symbolized by a new series of badges that recognizes the accomplishments of our younger students. program was something that we started to do so that we could give kids an opportunity to do a little alternative education when they come to the Springs Preserve. The trading post known as the Nature Exchange is ideal for collectors but now also offers valuable rewards for learners who want to trade in ideas as well as artifacts. One of the things that happens in the Nature Exchange is if you're discovering it for the first time it's hard to take part, you know, the people don't bring things, people don't naturally walk around with rocks or pine cones or dead bugs in their pocket. So what the badge program did is it allowed people to kind of get a head start on a nice activity that would encourage not only discovery and themes about the Springs Preserve, but also about, you know, uh, their own education and you know, learn a little and have fun at the same time. The range of badges perfectly represents the world within the preserve property, but also inspires the curiosity of students about a whole universe of scientific subjects beyond our boundaries. There are 12 badges, one for each month of the year, and each month we put out a different uh, a little booklet that the kids can take and, and study. Um, we start with simple things that have to do with the Springs Preserve, such as geology or entomology, studying bugs, studying nature. We have a plant, uh, a plant study, a biology, a botany. 
We have a, a wildlife badge where kids can study the animals that they find here in the Mojave Desert. Um, but we also have badges that talk about some of the things that you wouldn't consider for scientific interest, something that could appeal to everybody. We have a badge about oceanography, a badge about uh, uh, landscape architecture, a badge about design. The lessons are suited to all kinds of learners, from those who want a crash course to those who want to immerse themselves thoroughly in the material. There's probably in all 15 to 20 questions per booklet. Once the parents pick up the booklet, they can bring it back in at any time, so you don't have to turn it in in that month or turn it in that day. In fact, we encourage them to take it home, study, and you know, get involved into it, uh, to really appreciate what they're learning and what they're covering, and then bring it back at any time. Once they've finished their programs and once they've done all of the work, we look it over and have a little celebration where we hand them the badge and earn their reward for what they've learned. Some of our most diligent students are right on track to become the first graduates of the badge program. Uh, we have several groups that have gotten six of the 12, but uh, they're already saying, you better start some more because we'll be done by the summer. Mad Science Mania is running amok in our Big Springs Theater with a show that's driving audience members just plain crazy about the astonishing aspects of our Mojave Desert Ecology. And the backstage pass experience after the show is making the craziest maniacs even more insane for scientific knowledge. To find out more, visit springspreserve.org. For local kids who are in the know, and their parents too, the spring and summer breaks from school are some of the most eagerly awaited weeks of the year. Not because they're free to do whatever they please, but because they've been eagerly following all of our plans for enrichment and excitement camps here at the preserve. This spring, green will be our theme as the preserve landscape is transformed into a laboratory and playground for campers to learn memorable lessons about the essential resources and activities of living sustainably. Water, sun, soil, plants, and recycling. Our spring break camp we've designed specifically to be aligned with our mission. We have a whole sustainable theme. Each day will be a different sustainable topic. So we're going to be doing all about water and water conservation, have the kids testing the water out here. And they're going to be making their own corn plastic when we learn about recycling. And they're going to be making solar ovens to help learn about solar power. All in a setting and guided by instructors dedicated to making conservation practices exciting and achievable goals. We don't really want to reinvent the wheel, you know, we're going to be playing all kinds of fun games, all kinds of crafts, uh, taking advantage of what we have here at the Springs Preserve and the Nevada State Museum and just really exploring. And our hardcore camp fans will have 11 weeks of exploring the preserve ahead of them this summer with an ever-changing schedule of subjects. So we're having like an under the sea theme and we'll be having a Viva Las Vegas theme. Of course, a dinosaur theme with our new dinosaur exhibit that'll be coming and looking at different ways to explore the history and nature of the Springs Preserve and just kind of exciting, fun activities. Each headlined by one after another impressive expert in the field of the week. For our superheroes and villains week, a comic book artist will come in and teach them how to do a comic book. And uh, for Under the Sea, we're hoping to have Shark Reef come in and talk to them and get them some hands-on kind of artifacts. So it should be a really exciting way for them to get to see some real expertise. Because we know how demanding and discerning our audience of 6 to 12 year old camp followers can be. And that's why we're planning to give them all the variety of preserve experiences they deserve. We're really excited about the themes because we think that's going to be a way to keep it fresh and new. Um, you can just come back week after week and have a whole new great fun experience. So make it easy on yourself by visiting us online at springspreserve.org to find more information. Then complete your registration as soon as you can to get some great deals and keep your campers happy. If you're a homeowner or a professional landscape designer who's made the most of our precious water resources in creating a lush and colorful outdoor living space, then you can share your experiences and be rewarded for them as well by entering the 2015 Southern Nevada Landscape Awards. Log on to springspreserve.org for more information. We think you'll want to raise a toast to Chef Sicily's spring forward recipe that eats like an ode to the roasting of trout, red pepper and garlic, all brightened by the colors and fresh seasonal flavors of lemon and thyme that will leap off your plate and palate. Howdy folks.
folks, my name is Chef Cicely and I'm here at the Divine Cafe in the Springs Preserve. Today we're going to be roasting some fish with a new potato salad and roasted peppers. So the way I'm going to start is I have a mixing bowl here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop in my baby fingerling potatoes. I've got the red potatoes and they are quartered, but that's not anything as far as flavor so much. It's more for even cooking. A sliced potato this size and a whole potato this size are going to take about the same amount of time to cook. So I've got these guys quartered. Put them all in there. Pretty simple. Going to take some oil. Going to take some salt. Don't need that much. Just a touch will do. And then I'm also going to take some pepper. And I'm going to mix all of this together. All right. Now I have a baking sheet. I'm going to bring this right over. I'm going to dump out these potatoes on the dish. And then I'm going to take one of these here trout. I'm going to open it up so you can see inside. It is boneless. So the rib and the spinal cord has all been removed. And as this type of fish has also been scaled. And that's important if you get fish. You want to make sure that it is scaled. So this is actually the fish skin. It doesn't have any of those rough components. It feels nice and smooth when I run my hands along it. This fish is going to roast up nice and crispy. Now I'm going to take some lemons that have been sliced and also cut in half. Then I'm going to take some thyme. And what you'll see with this thyme is I've got the whole sprig. I've got leaves on there and everything, and I'm just going to put the whole thing right in there. I'm going to close it up, put some lemons on the top, get some more beautiful sprigs. I'm done. This is ready to go into the oven. It's going to roast at about 325 to 350, depending on the oven, uh, for roughly 20 to 40 minutes. So when it's done, the flesh of the fish is going to flake nicely away from the skin. And that's how we'll really tell when it's done. And we are ready to compose our garnish for our completed dish when the fish comes out of the oven. The first thing I'm going to do is actually roast a garlic. So here I have a whole head of garlic. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it on its side and I'm going to slice right through the top so that it's nice and open. I'm going to pull away this extra paper, but for the most part, I'm going to just leave it there as it is. And I've got a piece of tin foil. It's already been cut. I'm going to take some olive oil, dash of that, and no salt on there. I'm just going to go with some pepper and then also a few sprigs of rosemary. And before I put that rosemary in, I'm going to take the blunt end of my knife and I'm just going to rub it on those herbs. And you can see how what that does is, oh, that's potent. Yum. It just wakes up the flavor. It, it opens up the pores of the plant so that the oil can spill out into the garlic. So I get that nice rosemary flavor in my garlic. I'm going to fold this over. And this is going to go in the oven right next to the trout for about 20 minutes till that garlic's nice and soft. The other thing I want to roast is a pepper. So I've got a red bell pepper here and Chef Steve at the Divine Cafe just showed me the most amazing way to cut a pepper so I'm going to go ahead and just take advantage of that. So I have now a nice pepper skin I'm going to place that onto a roasting pan, a little bit of olive oil, and then a little bit of pepper, rub it around. And this is going to go into the oven with the trout. Same thing, about 20 minutes, and it'll all come out at about the same time. All right, so our fish is coming out of the oven. It looks beautiful and smells amazing. You can see we've got a nice crispy skin on this fish, and the lemons are roasted, the potatoes are roasted. So I want the fish to rest for a minute. 
So I have my roasted potatoes here. And what I'm going to make is actually a new potato salad. And we put some other things into the oven with that fish. We put bell peppers that we roasted. And I've got a piece of that here. And what I would like to show you is how you can actually pull the skin off of the bell pepper if you don't like that in your meal. Otherwise, you're welcome to just simply slice it up, take those bell peppers, toss them in with the potatoes. And then also here we have some beautiful roasted garlic. And I don't just want to drop this in there because we're going to get all those garlic paper skins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blunt end of my knife, holding this here, and at an angle, I'm just going to slowly push on it. And oh yes, those are beautiful garlic cloves. Just chopping, popping right out of there. You're welcome to chop it, or if you're a garlic lover like me, in it goes. Then this just needs to get tossed up. And what I also have here is some fresh arugula, which in the springtime grows up beautifully. I've got quite a bit, but with the heat of the potatoes and the heat of the garlic and then going underneath the fish, it's just going to wilt down. And I have enough flavor from the lemon, from the thyme, and from the salt and pepper on the potatoes to flavor that so we're ready to put it on the plate. I'm going to start leaving the potatoes a little bit more toward the front. Vegetable garnish is beautiful. And I always like to make sure that I have at least one of those key ingredients right up front so that you can see what you're eating first. And I'm going to take this trout just as it lies right on top. And so here we have our roasted trout over a new potato salad. Thank you again for joining me, Chef Sisley, at the Vine Cafe here at the Springs Preserve. I hope you have a lovely springtime and that we get to see you here soon. There's a lot more to discover, so join us next time here at the Springs Preserve, where learning is sweet like a candy for the mind and all the other senses too, as it brings new life to Las Vegas.